Today we're going to talk about some things to consider when you're starting a Space Marine Army in 9th edition. Hello and welcome back to War Specs Tactics, the strategy focused 40k channel, where today we're talking about the strategy of an entire new 40k project if you're looking to build up a Space Marine army from the ground up. In this video we'll talk about a few reasons why you might want to collect Space Marines, the various kind of army archetypes and Space Marine chapters you can play, some discussion as to saving money a bit when buying Warhammer, and which kits I would think about getting for Space Marines first. There's honestly quite a bit to think about with a new 40k army choice, so let's jump straight into it. So honestly Games Workshop makes it very easy for people to collect Space Marines and there's a lot of very good reasons to play them. They're well supported by Games Workshop to the extent where other factions get envious, a huge amount of lore and background from the 40k universe is based around them, and multiple individual chapters have incredibly detailed histories, and they're pretty much touted as the iconic poster boys of Warhammer 40k. There are a few armies that epitomise the setting, more than a massive power armoured superhuman striding slowly forward and killing Xenos and heretics with his massive bolt gun. From a collecting point of view, they're a fairly elite army which is useful for collecting them, it means that you won't need quite as many models on the table as some factions, and they're also a bit cheaper than most other factions. Doubling down on this, they're pretty much the strongest army in the game right now, with a ridiculous amount of flexibility, loads of different ways that you can play them, and a frankly unrivaled amount of plastic kits. All of these positives do mean that there's a little bit of community fatigue at the moment, Space Marines have got a lot of recent releases and a lot of really powerful rules, which has led to a fair few people being just a little bit tired of Marines' prevalence. I honestly think that this will be a fairly temporary matter though, once the other 9th edition codexes start rolling out, and this initial release wave of Space Marines dies down, then I think that things will be received far more positively. So if you are deciding to collect Space Marines, you need to decide what sort of army you want to play. We'll get onto some other army archetypes in a second, but there's quite a big split in the Space Marine line at the moment. Most people will be aware that Games Workshop is redoing the range, there's a lot of primary Space Marines that are upscaled and looking slightly bigger than the older style ones. They can both be fielded in-game at the moment, but there are concerns that at some point Games Workshop might stop supporting the older style Space Marines, though I don't think that that will be happening any time in 9th edition. Some people like to go one way or the other purely for aesthetics and not mixing different sized Space Marines, though there's no actual reason that you have to. If I were starting a new Space Marine force now, I would tailor to getting a fair few more Primaris kits than the older ones myself, just to avoid any possibility of my kits being phased out. While you're planning your army, it's quite good fun to think about a colour scheme and chapter background for your force, whether you're going with one of the many and varied different well-supported Space Marine chapters, who each have their own unique playstyles and special rules, or whether you're going to make a custom successor chapter of your own with your own heraldry, and maybe being a successor chapter of one of the big ones. For me, I painted in my own colours, which I personally quite enjoy, and it's quite useful gameplay-wise as well, as it means that you can chop and change the rules a bit more. People don't really mind armies painted in their own colour schemes being run under different balance, but you might get a few more funny reactions if you say have a clearly Ultramarines army being played as White Scars for example. We'll just go through a very brief list of some of the different chapters and what makes them unique. Ultramarines are the ones on all the box art, blue heraldry and a Roman-esque theme, big fans of the Codex Astartes, with standard space marines with bolt guns being prevalent in their ranks. White Scars are Mongol themed white armoured bike outrider space marines famed for their devastating charges. Raven Guard are shadowy Spec Ops Space Marines, famed for their lightning clawed jump pack marines and assassinating the enemy's characters. Iron Hands believe the flesh is weak, augmenting their already superhuman bodies with powerful bionics and have a great affinity for vehicles. And Salamanders are dragon themed master craftsmen, selfless defenders of imperial populations and use a lot of melter and flame in weaponry. The Imperial Fists are the yellow armoured defenders of terror, Black Templars are crusading knights in space, where Dark Angels are more of a monastic knightly order, covering up their terrible secrets. The Blood Angels are tragic heroes, fighting against their madness of their genetic flaw. The Space Wolves fight in blue-grey, a Viking-themed Nordic army with a wolf obsession. And the Death Watch are the Imperium's dedicated Xenos hunters, fighting in small kill teams with special issue ammunition. There really is a whole ton to choose from, and you can always make up your own backstory, perhaps being a successor chapter of one of these more famous ones. Space Marines really have it easy in terms of various different ways to play them. All the ways might not necessarily be the strongest, but they really can have a go at doing a lot of different playstyles. Perhaps one of the most common is an advancing gun line with a lot of bolter armed infantry moving forwards, things like intercessors or tactical marines. The ultramarines will be a big fan of that. You can have jump pack forces descending from the skies to cut the enemy to bits with chainswords, tank and vehicle gun lines, going heavy on dreadnoughts. 
rapid attack forces with bikes and land speeders, such as the White Scars or the Dark Angel's Ravenwing, infiltrating and spec ops sort of forces with the Phobos armoured Primaris Marines, plinking away at the enemy's characters with eliminators and generally refusing to fight on a fair footing, a mechanised infantry approach with impulsors transporting assault intercessors or something similar, and you've got options for other things such as artillery, flyers, and a new fortification in that Hammerfall turret, all of which you can throw into your army if you want. You certainly don't have to go down any one of these pathways entirely, you can mix and match, say having a lot of bolter troops to hold the line, with a large element of terminators or something deep striking to take out the enemy back line. In general, I try and pick a few things that really inspire you in terms of what sort of force you want to play, maybe mess around and make a few army lists, think of a colour scheme and paint a few test models, and then really get things underway. There are a few general things that I usually advise people when collecting Warhammer 40k. Typically it's not worth buying an entire 2000 point army all in one go, it might get very expensive, and you might realise further down the line you might not necessarily want certain units when you've found out a bit more about what they do. I typically expand in small hops, maybe a few kits at a time, or just one at a time, get them assembled and painted up, have some games each time, and I'd start with some of the core units, things like troops and characters to fill out your detachments, and the units that you find the most fun and really inspire you to play them. For example, maybe it might not be the best purchase to buy a Vindicator tank with a massive gun as one of the first things that you get, but if you really like the idea of a siege tank breaking through the enemy lines, then why not? When you're buying Warhammer, things can often be found cheaper than Games Workshop itself. Warhammer products are often stocked at independent retailers, there might be local stores in your area where you can buy things at a bit of a discount, and in several places around the world there's big online retailers that do similar, for example in the UK there's Element Games one of the supporters of the channel, and there's a link to them down in the video description. Thoroughly recommend them for discounts, and of course if you buy anything through there, it helps support Allspecs Tactics. Just something to think about if you do live in the UK. There is also a massive second-hand market, particularly for Space Marines, as they're pretty much the most popular faction. If you're happy with having the kits already built and assembled, then eBay can be great, and they also stock plenty of new kits as well, particularly in some of these start collecting boxes, where you might be able to find individual kits going at less than the rate that Games Workshop sells them. Before you buy any single model kit, I do usually tend to give it a quick eBay search myself, just to make sure that there isn't a bargain going. There's also plenty of other places for trading miniatures, such as Facebook groups or people selling things in your local area, which might be an option depending on where you are. Finally, I would remember that points and rules can and do change, so I would think about getting models that you actually like and enjoy, and not just buy things just for the rules. Games Workshop rebalances things very regularly at the moment, so it's often better just to get a lot of units that you like the feel of, rather than necessarily just going for the strongest thing in the book, as quite often it won't be the case for very long. Talking of the rulebook, this Codex Space Marines is the current one. It's a little bit pricier than some of the previous ones, it's £30 in the UK, and unlike other codexes, it has both this core book and also a supplement system which gives you additional rules based on what chapter you're playing. For example, you'll have this core book with all of your core rules in it, and then say if you were playing Iron Hands, you could also buy the Iron Hands supplement, which would give you a few extra stratagems, warlord traits, relics, and any individual unique units that the faction has, such as the Iron Hands Iron Father Phyros. Typically, these supplements do make the army stronger, but as a new player, I would focus on just the core book to start with, get a few games under your belt, and maybe think about picking up your chapter supplement a little bit down the line. Finally, let's actually talk about buying some models, and which Space Marine kits I think are some of the best value. Many factions have their own start collecting boxes, and Space Marines are quite well treated as per normal, with three start collecting boxes that really stand out, and also Space Marines are present in the new starter sets, with Space Marines vs Necrons. First up, probably the best value in terms of Marines for your money, is this Vanguard Space Marines starter set, the one that you can see on the screen to the right now. It's £60 or $95, US dollars, and you get 10 Infiltrators, 3 Suppressors, 3 Eliminators, and a Phobos Lieutenant. It's really quite a lot of points towards starting a new Space Marine army, although I admit it does take you in one direction, very much the stealthy Phobos Armored Scout style troopers, so it depends whether you're into that vibe or not. I would generally say that all the units are pretty useful though, Eliminators and Suppressors are some pretty decent fire support, and a couple of units of Infiltrators can really help screen out other enemy units in-game. Another option is the start collecting Primaris Space Wolves, which is a pretty good option for starting a core of Space Marine units, as you basically get the full kit for the Primaris Intercessors and the Aggressors, and unlike in the Vanguard starter set, these are the full multi-part plastic kits, where you have the options of arming them with any of the options in the box. Both Intercessors and Aggressors are solid battle line units, even after the nerf that Aggressors took, 
and you can't really go too far wrong with these guys as the core of most Space Marine armies. You also get a couple of sets of the Space Wolves upgrade frame and a Space Wolf themed character, but you don't necessarily have to use the frames at all, or could even resell them. And I'm sure that you could press scan the character into being a regular lieutenant, maybe with just a bit of removing iconography. If you're thinking about getting either aggressors or intercessors, then this one's a pretty decent option in terms of the value saving. Our third and final star collecting box is the standard Space Marine one. This is the non-primaris one, so you get a Terminator Captain, a Tactical Squad, and a Venerable Dreadnought. As per the new codex, the Tactical Marines and Dreadnought are far better choices than they were in the past, and pretty solid core choices if you're starting a non-primaris army. If you're looking to go down the non-primaris route, then it's a pretty reasonable option, though I will admit that the Terminator Captain maybe isn't the ideal choice. Typically I'd be just wanting a more standard power armoured variant to lead these sort of units into battle. Next we have those Recruit and Elite starter sets, which contain some of the newest models for Space Marines and also pit them against a Necron foam. The one that you can see on the screen is the Elite set, it's £65 or $99, US dollars. and on the Space Marine side it gets you 5 Assault Intercessors, 3 Outriders, and a nice Captain with a Relic Storm Shield and a Power Sword. If you were just taking it for the Space Marines alone, it's reasonable value, though I wouldn't say it's the best, but if you could perhaps split it with a Necron player and pay half each, then £32.50 is pretty decent value for the units that you get on the Space Marine side. There is some value to both having the Recruit and the Elite sets as well, as the Recruit one gets you the Lieutenant rather than the Captain, and honestly they're quite decent loadouts for those guys with the Storm Shields and the Mastercrafted Power Swords. Again, I would certainly consider looking at eBay for any of the other very new Space Marine sets that are out. The Indomitus kits are generally going fairly cheaply on there at the moment, probably partly due to the situation where Scalpers bought a lot of it, and then Games Workshop announced that they were doing another printing run of the Indomitus, allowing as many people to buy it as they wanted, which means that prices haven't gone up too astronomically high as they might have otherwise. Could be a decent way for landing some things such as Blade Guard or the various unique characters. You might also be able to find some kits from Dark Imperium and No No Fear kicking around. They've been heavily discounted for a very long time now, so if you're looking for things like standard Intercessors or Inceptors, then it could be a way of getting them a little bit cheaper. In general, I'd start with one of these kits, maybe pad it out with another troops choice or two, perhaps an additional squad of standard intercessors. Depending on exactly what characters you've got from the start collecting kits, I'd think about adding an extra HQ or two to fill out your detachments and make your army legally fieldable in-game. Captains and lieutenants are almost always going to be useful, and other options include chaplains, librarians and tech marines, though I think you might want a little bit more of a plan as to what you're going to do with those guys. From there you should have a decent little core of an army established, maybe around 500 points or so, and you can start building out your army to take it in the direction that you want to. If you're playing White Scars, some bikes might be a good idea to get on the go. Maybe if you're going Iron Hands, pick up a Dreadnought or two. Typically these start collecting kits are really quite good for getting a few infantry units on the board and a lot of bolt guns. One of the biggest areas that they tend to miss is that they don't have that much for dealing with anti-tank and enemy heavies. It might well be worth packing in some things with heavy guns into the list, whether that's a Devastator squad with last cannons, some heavy hell blasters, or maybe some manner of combat unit with thunder hammers or power fists to help bash them up in close combat. Some of the generically strong things from Codex Space Marines include Redemptor Dreadnoughts, Terminators, Blade Guard Veterans, and Eradicators, the last being one of the strongest and slightly cheesiest units in the game at the moment, though again I would stress that rules and things can change, and so can points costs in Chapter Approved. Space Marines do have it fairly easy at the moment in their codex, and it really is quite hard to go too far wrong with building a Space Marine army. I suspect the competition will hot up a bit though, as more armies get their 9th edition codexes. So I hope that's been at least some help with starting to get a Space Marine army together. If you have any other further questions or insights, please let me know down in the comments below. I'm sure there'll be plenty of people who are happy to answer questions for newer players. If you've enjoyed the video, then feel free to subscribe to the channel. We'll have plenty of other coverage of the Space Marine Codex coming out over the next weeks and months, trying to process as many of the changes as possible. If you found the video to be of any help, or you've just been watching All Specs Tactics videos recently, I'd just like to mention that what keeps them coming is the channel's Patreon page. So if you have been enjoying a lot, any support there is massively appreciated. It is the thing that allows me the time to keep all these videos coming. I do try and give out a few rewards for channel Patreons, including seeing videos early each week, regular votes and things to see what comes next on the channel, and also entry into the channel's regular prize draw, with big kits being given away every single month. This month, three different people will win three model kits, three people will receive an Eliminators box, an Aggressors box, and a box of Intercessors, so if you want to be in a chance to win that, feel free to sign up, the link is down in the video description. In any case, a massive thank you for listening, and I'll hope to see you guys next time.